What is up guys, Doubles back in with a brand new video. Today we're gonna continue to tinker just for another video. I wanna show you guys me getting some brand new gear, really pumping actually, doing great DPS. I've also got some news for you in regards to Project Ascension in this video, what games I'm gonna be playing in the next few videos and uh, some stuff that's gonna be happening, you know, very soon. So hope you guys enjoy, let's jump right in. So I'm about to show you the entire journey of this character right here, my original character on Dusthaven, and I think this is very fitting because in this video, what I'd like to tell you just to start it all off is that for my next few videos, I want to play Project Ascension for a bit. Uh, I've just been having the itch recently. I've logged on a couple times, done some recording, but didn't release the videos. But recently I found a build I wanted to try, building up a character, and I want to show that in a video. And uh, I know some insider knowledge that a new thing is going to be coming and it's going to be really great. Now, because I respect these guys, especially Dutch, I will not be saying anything as I never do. But what I know I can do is at least show you what they've tweeted. I know I never talk about Twitter. Personally, I think Twitter is kind of like, it's a whole different kind of social media. I'll just say that. But I do have one for the channel. So check it out in the description below. Maybe uh, follow me on there. I like almost never use it. That's not the point though. The point is what I put up on the screen right now. And as you can see, a new video is in the works. If a new video is on the works by the awesome guy they have doing their videos with a lovely voice, I love listening to him. Hey there, heroes. I'm not gonna lie. Every time he calls us a hero in these videos, it really like gets me going, dude. That means something big is going to happen. I'm telling you, I already know what's going to happen, but I can't say it. It is big. It is sick. And thank God, right? Because when it comes to Ascension, the whole reason, guys, let's not forget the history here. The whole reason I made my hiatus over to places like Dustcaven, and we also did a little bit of Turtle HC, if you remember correctly. I did AAW. I did a little bit of Epoch WoW. Mostly Dustcaven, for sure, because it kind of gave me my custom itch that you know I like. But I didn't think this was going to be a thing. If you remember on my Tinker video, I just tried it, and I I was like, oh, Tinker, that's sick. Let's keep playing. And then it blew up and we made it blow up. Now there's definitely been some ups and some downs when it comes to Dusthaven. Ultimately, Nox was just not ready for the smoke that me and my community brought. I feel that, okay? Not that many people will be, you know what I mean? But I think it was awesome and super fun overall. But as we all always knew, I'm gonna play Ascension. That's my tried and true. And so because I know stuff is coming out and I have things that I wanna do and I'm feeling it right now, I do think it's time for me to play more Ascension. However, I will be trying Bard when it comes out, so there might still be a couple videos on Dust Cave. It might even be even more than that, because just like with Turtle Wow, where I'm still to this day waiting for a new raid to come out so I can play it on my Warlock, I do always visit these servers that I play uh, sometime in the future when new stuff comes out. Shinobi Story, all sorts of random crap. You guys know how it is. So I just wanted to make it clear that my next videos are definitely gonna be some Project Ascension, and uh, that's what it's gonna probably be for a little bit. Crap, I jumped in the water. Now, with that being said, we're gonna be playing a Tink today in this video. I am going to show you my talents real quick, but I won't go over them too in depth because they're just hunter talents, right? This is my spec. It is survival. And if you go to the Tinker forums in the Discord, you will be able to get this exact spec. So link in the description below for the Dust Cave and Discord. Now the key players here though is Black Arrow, of course, with the explosive shot, both being usable as a Tinker. We go really hard into crit, by the way. I'm going to get 10% more crit just from playing my class, 15% more agi. And of course that does translate to crit as well. I get even more agi from exposed weak. We're gonna get all this AP from things like Hunter vs. Wild. Actually, surprisingly, the majority of the talents in the survival spec work very well for Tinker, despite the fact that Beast Mastery has a couple, as we showed in previous videos, that work with it as well. Survival does seem to be the place to be. So the idea is to go for the lock and load, which procs super consistently off the black arrow, go for the explosive shot in between the scrap bullet. And I'll just put up on the screen right now, I'll probably mention it again at least one time in the video, but this is going to be my rotation, also given to me by the pro Tinkers in the Discord. Big shout out to those guys. They're actually all good people. But I do feel like I finally got to a point where I did super, super well DPS wise. So what I want to do is show you guys from the very beginning what went down, give you guys the journey. We'll meet back up with all the gear you see on and you knowing where I got it, what it does and where I am. And we'll continue from there. Well, the Tinker was a very interesting one for me, mostly because when I just saw the rotation that I just showed you guys, I thought to myself, oh God, what did I get myself into? This looks like it's going to be a little too complex. And you know me, I jump around a lot. So I like things that are not stupid easy all the time, but more likely something that's kind of in the middle, right? And not something that's gonna be kind of crazy, but I was actually completely wrong. The Tinker starts off feeling like it's complex. It's actually very easy to play. And during my first few M+, I think I did maybe in the range of 10 of them or something like that during what you're seeing right now. Essentially, and I could be bastardizing this slightly, but this is how I did it, right? Essentially, what you wanna do is you wanna make your uh, scrap gun come out. You wanna go for the black arrow. I was going for cursed arrow because I didn't actually see it on that list, or maybe I missed it, so I did that as well. Then I go for a handy dandy test.
Tesla coil, I turn off the scrap cannon, and then I go for an explosive shot into the machine gun. Now, obviously, prior to this, you want to get your turret down, you want to do the tune-up, and that's why it feels like a lot, because even as I'm explaining it, I'm like, oh crap, forgot the turret part, but it actually flows a lot better than you would think. And obviously, if you're on a boss, you want to go for your massive greatest invention and not just a baby turret. But at the precise moment that you're done with the machine gun, as far as I can see, all you have to do at that point is scrap bullet, explosive shot, scrap bullet, explosive shot, scrap bullet, explosive shot. You then maintain your turret, that's how I did it, as much as you can, with that tune-up on it, and then you just repeat the rotation as often as you can. Now, if you do the rotation exactly how I said and or the way that they show you in the Discord and with the screenshot that I showed you, you can peek with some crazy DPS numbers, and what you'll end up seeing in this video is that I can come in first and second place DPS and third top three very consistently, despite my gear being that of a fresh guy, just getting into it right, just trying to earn some gear for the first time, and on the topic of gear, that's exactly what I did. So, I was able to pull a couple weapons that we'll go over in a moment, I was able to get my two-piece bonus as well for the very first time on this guy. This two-piece is a little bit weak, I think, for Tinker, and the reason I think that is because it gives 3% more damage to me and 3% more to the pet. Now, for me, that's wonderful, but I don't think pet always means turret, I think they have to specify. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but if I'm right, it's just 3% more damage, which is not bad, like I said, I'll definitely take that, but I think there are other sets that Tinkers go for right now, maybe the Giant Stalker set, because I have seen that a lot, but that's something really to explore, make sure to check out my Discord if you're interested on any of the Dusthaven sets, I have all of them posted now, and by the way, major shout out to Kovacs Vortex, pretty cool name by the way, for uh, posting all of the stat bonuses for every single class in my Discord for me, finishing it for me, not just the M Plus sets, but also T1, T2, in fact, if I'm totally honest with you, if I show you this one right here, which I actually do think is Giant Stalker, uh, this is weird, because it makes me wonder if Melee Tinker could ever be a thing after I got Electrified Baton changed. The three-piece bonus actually gives you a second hit with Electrified Baton that strikes for 15% more additional damage. So now it's just like every single Electrified Baton is two hits, dude, and it's just crazy strong. I wonder if you put a 2H weapon on, if that would just be good enough, but only if you have the three-piece. I doubt it ever works. Maybe I should try it if I can actually get my hands on that. But as you can see, the five-piece gives you 5% more damage just by having a turret active, which it's always active, right? So there's some good stuff there. Now, after getting all of that stuff, I was able to set myself up to think that I could maybe go into some raids now, try to pull some more gear, but also compete. And compete is exactly what I did. <laughs> guys so we got top five on onyxia basically first try in this regard let's roll for this there's no way we win i rolled a 74 somebody got a 99 damn it that was a token piece right there so we could get the mount which would at least be neat does anything else drop for us though no nope. no the head of onyxia i guess i could use i'm pretty sure the necklace is slightly better than the uh blaze fury medallion but it's kind of a greedy pickup but this was a pretty big run 15 man i got top five i'm happy with that a Nixia hide backpack. Dude, people just keep rolling crazy numbers. Like, I've been doing this across my alts, not gonna lie, and uh, I never win anything. I was on my DK, and I was on another guy as well, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll do a different type of video if I can get some loot and make some stuff happen. No. Nope. No, dude, I could not. Come on, make my luck better today. Let me win the reigns of the frenzied chimera, please. <gasps> okay, let's go. 16. See, what is this universe, dude? Literally on Dusthaven, I have the worst luck of any game I've ever played. Even worse than Ascension, and that really does say something. So I'll put up on the screen right now the rotation I was told by uh, a bunch of Tinker players in the Dust Cave and Discord. I like these guys, you know? Like, it's the only time really ever that I've played something like this, and a bunch of people who have really tried hard to make it work said, hey, let me just share all of my knowledge with you. I really do respect that on a deep level. I'm not saying that they might not have some tricks or something that they keep to themselves, but it tells you a lot about the community of the Tinker people on Dust Cave, and I really do think they're cool people. So they told me how to do it, and I tried to replicate it on this boss. You can see Machine 
gun, an explosive shot, and then scrap bullet are the most damage I do. Rocket launch, which comes from the tune-up, by the way, is big as well. I might not have been able to say this, and maybe it wasn't noticeable, but when you tune up, it doesn't just make your uh, turret go faster and do more damage. Depending on the turret, it seems to also give it an extra ability. So with the regular turret, it's a rocket launcher, and with the uh, flame turret, it's down here, cold flame. I think I used it like one time, just because I know they told me not to go for the AoE, but I like to go for everything. I like to utilize my full class just from a sheer fun point of view. One thing I find interesting is like I did have a couple times where electrified baton was usable. Actually, apparently it was a few times, three exactly. That's 3,000 damage you probably could not have guaranteed before. Every little bit does add up, you know? But yeah, most of my damage is really the machine gun, explosive shot, scrap bullet, and then even the turret, and then Tesla coil. Only four times, and it's top five on my damage. So you know what? I'm actually pretty impressed by how this is going right now. In terms of my gear, I think I showed you guys the progression so far for me, but we're still rocking like level 20 stuff with the uh, trip runner dungarees or whatever they're called, and uh, we did get some stuff, like 3% more damage and 20 hit from this two-piece from the Mythic Plus set. But you know what? For the most part, we still got a lot of work, right? A lot of uh, progress to make. Okay, but with that being said, do we win the head of Onyxia, please? Like I said, I'm pretty sure the necklace is definitely better than what I've got. It turns out the uh, fire damage doesn't work really with the machine gun or anything like that. What you want is a main hand weapon with a proc chance. Everybody's saying to get Fell Striker, so I'll probably look for that. Okay, head of Onyxia, do we win? Nope. No, we don't. Okay, that's all right. Maybe we go for some other content right now. Let's try to get more gear. Let's try to make it positive and let's make more happen. I'm really actually enjoying the Tinker right now, but what I can say is that it's really complex in regards to how many buttons you have to click and having them in a very specific order and not a simple rotation. I mean, it does become simple with scrap bullet explosive shot, scrap bullet explosive shot, but it doesn't start that way. And you do have to think throughout the entire encounter when your cooldown is going to come back up, when do you press certain things at certain times, when do you tune up, uh, which is every time, but still, you have to think about it. Anyway, let's make more stuff happen like I said. All right, so, so far I've done the first two bosses, the custom boss and then this guy Lucifron right here. And I was able to come in second place DPS both times. The crazy thing is I started this boss off completely misplaying by not using my greatest invention. And uh, I wonder, I just wonder if I could boost it right up to getting into first place. Just one time against the survival hunter I'm up against right now. You have to understand, I'm still in level 20 blues and 40 gear, right? So actually coming in second place right now is not a joke. But my point is my gear is way freaking worse, right? So when you look at it like that and you assume that most people are probably going to be in between my extreme and the guy that's beating me, I actually would say coming in second place so far with Tinker says a lot about the Tinker class. It's quite strong when you do it with this rotation. It's kind of hard to upkeep it, and I do think I make mistakes, and I think for some of these bosses, I'm about to chill for a second and uh, just see if we get loot. But it's one of those things also where you can definitely get in the zone, and before you know it, you're in first place DPS, almost, right? Second place, let's say, in this case, because that's what just happened to me on the last boss. Not paying attention, then I say, okay, I'm in the zone, boom, DPS flew up, dude. I was like eight or something like that in the beginning. So, okay, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna keep going, but the main thing here is not a DPS check, guys. The main thing here is still loot. I need a full set of epics, at least outside of my crappy trinkets, right? Only one good trinket. Okay, well, it might have taken me until the very last boss, but I came first place on Ragnaros. I'll definitely take it. In all honesty, it was a horrible run for gear, like almost nothing of relevance drop. I missed out on Giant Stalker wrist guards, which does suck, but I did get the chest plate, which should be pretty decent. Now, the gloves are actually not as good in terms of raw damage compared to what I had, but they do give me 20 hit rating, which I do need for hit hit cap. So in that regard, for now, they are better. So yeah, we'll stay with them. So, okay, decent run, I guess. We did get some loot. I'll take the first place DPS on Ragnaros, though, for sure. All right, guys, quick plus two real quick. I just want to show you guys, like, uh, how the DPS goes. This is actually a bastardized version of the actual rotation. Going for that explosive shot scrap bullet right off the bat. And we're getting it constantly because of the lock and load into the machine gun right here. And you can see I'm already in first place DPS despite that bastardized start. I am just going to go for my greatest invention and not ruin this any more than I have. Go for a Tesla coil right here into the explosive shot and just start going once again. Very nice. We have that uh, find weakness. We also went to the black arrow. I also made sure to get off another tune up, go for another machine gun. And you can see, like, even when you bastardize it completely, it doesn't really matter. Like, you're still going to be really, really well. He just healed himself. No big deal. Go for a tune-up. Keep up the tune-up. Go for a turret. Go for the scrap bullet into the explosive shot. Tune-up immediately. Let's go for a machine gun, because I think it's going to work really nicely here at the end. And you can see over 1k DPS. 1.1k maybe. Oh, he healed again. Are we joking? Okay, into the black arrow. Let's make sure we get some mana. We'll go for a Tesla coil curse arrow as well first. So this should be big damage. There's no way that this actually goes the way I think it's going, right? 12 seconds later. Dude, he just healed for like the 50th time. I've never seen it go this badly in my entire life. What is even going on right now? 
Like, I actually almost died. I've never seen it go this badly in my entire freaking life, guys. Here I am, super confident. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna have about 1.1k, no biggie. With my gear, by the way, that's pretty good. We did win. Holy crap, dude. I guess it doesn't matter because we still came in first place DPS machine gun right up there. But anyway, three more bosses. I'm really just hoping we get something from this dungeon, guys. I really have a lot of blue gear from leveling. And overall, I would just like to make more progress. But I guess the main point of this video is just showing you guys that I think Tinker is actually really good. Now, listen, I think a lot of the debate in the Tinker Discord right now, in Dust Gaming Discord, but Tinker forums, is that uh, those guys are playing on the highest level. And I've heard that Tinker is not competing necessarily there. Or at least that's what you should logically think based on all the complaining that I see. But if I'm honest, like on a regular level, if the question is, is Tinker viable? I think the answer has to be yes, right? Because my results have just been incredible. Like everything I get into, I do good. I did that whole MC run earlier and I'm like first, second place the entire raid. Like it's not really a question if Tinker does good DPS, it does. I guess it just loses to certain things at the very highest level. But I just don't know if it's like grounds for a big buff. Now, one thing apparently that's gonna happen after the bard is a Tinker rework. And yes, I do think think Tinker could use a rework, so I'm not going to say it doesn't need that just because the DPS is good enough. But basically, the ultimate rework to Tinker would take it away from using things like Black Arrow and Explosive Shot and keep it using unique Tinker stuff with a viable rotation that does good DPS. I also think it would allow you to use multiple uh, inventions at one time, so you wouldn't have situations where you can't use Greatest Invention with your turret. And those are just like a couple things I would definitely do. We can go for a My Greatest Invention right here, and maybe we can pull this up. I'm already really, really low. Can I actually win halfway into the fight? Cursed Arrow, Explosive Shot? Yeah, that's what I would basically do to it. And I think if you focused on the Tinker stuff, the Scrap Bullet, make Electrified Baton actually worth it, maybe like a hybrid-esque play style, I think that could be pretty cool. First place at the end, 1K, by the way. And yeah, that's probably how he'll end up reworking it, to be real with you. But like I told you at the beginning of the video, like, I will test Dusk Haven when interesting stuff comes out, including a possible Tinker rework if it's different enough. But ultimately, I really do feel like Dusk Haven just, like, needs some time, you know what I mean? Like, it's had so much influencer, uh, well, influence on it, and so, like, for example, I make videos on a class, we immediately see changes. I really feel like Nox has just been unfairly in many ways. I say unfairly. I know he asked me to play a server, basically, and then I checked it out, and I was like, oh, this is worth my time, and I showed it to you guys, and it blew up. Basically, what I'm about to talk about is that it's really, really hard for people to understand that when thousands of people suddenly pay attention to you, it's not necessarily like this God-given amazing Superman privilege. I would say, actually, especially when it first happens, it's absolutely terrifying, and nobody really handles it right at all the first time. For Nox, it happened. You know what I mean? It's, it's it's way harder than you think. Even on your best day, it's harder than what you think. Uh, because words do actually affect normal, non-sociopathic human beings, right? He's got all these words coming all the time, how he should do things. It's no longer his vision. He had to hire randos all at once, and there's been a lot of weirdness because it turns out the average people in the community, it's just really hard to find good people. I'll just say that. Like most people, they listen to their emotions too much. They're not fit for being in positions of power. Uh, I think everybody could learn it, but whether they have that skill set before they start applying for a job that needs it, I don't know. So that's why Ascension's unique because Dutch has really just like got a good hold on that entire thing, right? Right now. He's a good leader, I'll give him that. But otherwise, you always see weird corruption with devs because, again, most people just can't handle it. They just aren't good enough at it and uh, they never had any practice at it and they power trip, right? So Nox has had a lot of trouble with that, you know, and it's not necessarily his fault. Like I said, he had to go so fast. And I guess the whole point of this uh, quick spiel real quick as we approach the last boss is that I don't blame him, but I think he needs some time to where the hot mic isn't on him and he can actually build this server and polish it himself. And so having a stable population where he can just do that and he's not pressured by me, I mean, that's not my actual intent for wanting to play Ascension right now. I want to play it because I think it's fun. Big updates are coming out and I've just been yearning because that's my boy, that's my baby right there. I've been playing it, not for no reasons because I genuinely like it. I think that he'll benefit from that to be real as well. All right, let's see. Do we get any loot? Okay, so basically garbage dropped, which is not good. That's a big F, man. All right, so yeah, that's actually another story of my life when it comes to this type of stuff. So I do personally believe that the uh, system on Dusk Haven is a little too difficult, I think, to gear up in. Like if you have a guild and you're doing every raid together and you get all that raid gear, like the raiding progression gear stuff is actually pretty good. But I'm telling you, as somebody that likes to play alone and random pug, it's extremely tough to get good stuff. Because every new party you get into, there's four people rolling on a token bare minimum. The chance of you winning in that regard is 25%. And then you end up like me. I've done at least a dozen on every character and before I end up telling you guys about it and making a video. And then I always tell you guys, what do I say? Oh, I did a dozen dungeons. I have a two-piece set and a bunch of level 20 blues. Yeah. 
That's how it works. Now, I'm not entirely sure how they fix this, but I think one really good way to start off would just be uh, making it to where a token is guaranteed to drop every single run. The fact that it's not only RNG when you uh, actually have a token drop in a pug run, but it's also the RNG of will it drop in a pug run, I think is a major bit of cancer, right? Especially considering that as far as I can see, a lot of the M plus sets, while cool and I really enjoy that they exist, I don't think they're actually considered better than a lot of the raid sets and probably for good reason. So making it that hard to get, it's kind of weird because you would think the whole point of earning an M plus set would be to use it in your first raid. That's how I would interpret it because it's only item level 63. So the fact that it's actually easier for me to get raid gear than it is for me to get M plus gear is actually really weird. So you can just imagine if I hit AC, if I hit uh, the brand new Emerald Dream raid, if I hit BWL, like I'd just be rocking so much gear right now. It's not even funny, but it's harder to pug that stuff. You know what I mean? But I think we're going to try stocks real quick and I say, why not? We'll see if we get some gear. All right. So we're on the very first boss, Targor the Dread. Didn't even use Use my greatest invention because I can never remember for God knows what reason. Let's go for a Tesla coil. Let's nail this first place DPS. Literally no big deal. This Tinker is pretty good, dude. Tinker is pretty good. Like, I feel like there's not much to show because I just own with this class. Like, I literally have a hard time coming in less than first place DPS. Now, these dudes in the Discord are right. The AoE is just not special, which is why I keep cutting to the bosses. Like, look, I can come in first place on trash pulls if they're short and small like this one. Like, I bet I will, right? Let's go for a machine gun. And I don't have to use all my stuff to do it. You do fly up with the machine gun itself every time. That didn't change from when I was leveling. It's still super strong, despite the fact that apparently one of the big issues with Tinker is half your stuff doesn't scale, and Nox should just add any kind of scaling. Even if it was 0.10, like 0.1, I mean, uh, on any of your stuff, that'd be so much better. I'm talking AP scaling, by the way. Maybe ranged AP specifically, because you go full agi. But yeah, you can see I'm first place DPS. But if it's like three, four, five, six guys at once, like Tinker gets slaughtered. It's so not even funny. Like I still go for flame turret and I still go for the load of scrap. But one thing I did see recommended was taking a uh, modified scrap gun just straight up out of the game. And I do agree with that. I think Tinkers would be happier if modified scrap gun didn't exist. And you could just use load of scrap and uh, Tesla coil whenever you wanted. It adds an extra GCD to your rotation that you turn off anyway. And you can see like if I'm not paying too much attention, like boom, last place DPS, you know? So you do have to actually put a little bit more effort into it. You can't just scrap bullet, which I think is fine and fair. But yeah, like remove modify scrap gun. I think Tinker players will be happy. So one thing I hope I can do in this video is just, you know, make recommendations happen before I stop playing the class to help those guys because they deserve it. And yeah, I think that would be a big one. Because like right now, load of scrap is not even worth using. But if you didn't have to go into modify scrap gun, maybe somebody could throw it out. Sometimes I wish I had design powers, man. I really do hope someday I get to make a game for you guys. Because like, even if it's just like designing a private server, I feel like I could do a really good job. Because, like, imagine this, my Tinker friends out there. Assume that everything I say is, like, viable DPS, right? What if after using a load of scrap, similar to how Tesla Coil improves the power of load of scrap after you use it, now, after using a load of scrap, your next electrified baton hits multiple targets, maybe. The idea is that you just put metal on all those guys, and so when you use electrified baton on the first guy, it spreads the damage, and you hit, like, three to five more targets, and boom, that's more AoE DPS. Now, with electrified baton being instant cast, by the way, it's even better. You can see, by the way, I was just going scrap bullet explosive shot, like, no effort at all, last place DPS. You can literally see that I'm not lying. Like, that's literally all it was. But yeah, I do think that one change would just be sick, dude. You just remove modify scrap gun, you make a load of scrap, make it to where electrified baton hits multiple targets that you know puts it in the rotation these are good changes in my opinion and then you make everything scale with ranged ap or melee ap i guess whatever works right you know and you do that at the very bare minimum as an integrity change yo you know what i mean so that's what i would do if i was nox and uh i, I really do feel your pain i guess since this is the last time i'm playing tinker for a little bit i might as well like make this speech too i am very sorry that like things only seem to have happened some of the times when i made suggestions for it i hope you guys don't think that i'm over here like thinking that that's a big deal for me, you know? Like, I like that I can do it, especially when I do it with Ascension too. But ultimately, I don't want to have to make those types of changes a lot because I want to play the game and have fun the same way you guys do. But the big thing is that I made those changes so that when somebody played, let's say, Melee Monk after me, they didn't have to go through the same cringy things that I went through. I want you guys to immediately have fun. And I feel like there's some prerogative there for me to try and make things better with every game I play. That's why it started off like that in Ascension as well, because again, I am pseudo advertising because I say pseudo because obviously I don't put out a video with the intent of advertising. But just by lieu of playing it, I am advertising and I don't mean to since it's for so many people. So I think if I'm going to tell you guys I'm having fun, which I am, and that doesn't mean I'm doing amazing every time, I should at least try to make sure that if you guys choose to do what I do and sink in your time into it the way that I do, 
that you have more fun than me at the very bare minimum, but at least as much fun as me, right? So that's why I do what I do. It just happened to be that for Dustcaven, that was the only thing that was happening because they weren't making as many changes on their own. I don't know why. It could be because they were, you know, having their hands full with like the DDoS apparently that was going on with the server infrastructure problems, with the crazy amount of insider knowledge I know about their uh, inner workings with their staff and all the drama and power tripping that is still happening there. Can't talk in detail, obviously, out of respect. So that's probably why, if you want just complete transparency and complete honesty. But uh, yeah, that's just what I assume. But yeah, I think that's why it looks the way it did. Because on Ascension, I get about the same amount of changes made to that game as I did on Dusthaven all the time. The difference is Ascension devs actually balance it and constantly do stuff for their game a lot without me ever saying a thing. Well, I hope all of that just makes some sense for what was going on on Dust Cave in the last two months that we played it together. But as I say that, we are going to be approaching the last boss. So uh, watch me dominate my greatest invention into the tune-up. Let's go for all the damage modifiers. I am immediately stunned. That sucks. Now we're going to go for a Tesla coil right here as well. I know I should Hunter's Mark. I'll do it after the coil. What a mistake, though. Let's go for a machine gun. I didn't do the explosive shot right before it. Oh, I got interrupted. Okay, that's fine. It got interrupted. I'll still come in first place, uh, spamming the uh, scrap bullet. Let's go for electrified baton because I can for a second. Okay, we're going to go for a black arrow. Go for a tune-up. Get that mana up. So now I can scrap- oh, he's dead. What? How did I lose to that guy? Damn it, I made too many mistakes. Here I am being cocky. Literally lost by 100 DPS. Okay, well, it, it won't happen next time, boys. Don't worry. Okay, Cursed Fellblade plus four is actually an upgrade if we can win that. It's a small upgrade, but I'll take anything at this point. All right, that looks like the only thing. So do we win it? But you see how there's no token? I did win it. Okay, I will take it. Let's put it on. And that is uh, plus four with the main stats and a little bit more crit. So, okay, a couple speeches out of the way. Some DPS testing as well. I think we had fun, bro. I think we had fun. So even though I died with him on like 4%, I'm actually super happy with this performance because I just came in third place on Heroic Onyxia, highest level of Onyxia. Honestly, I'm not going to lie to you guys, for those of you that haven't done it, it's actually easier than the normal fight, just going to be real. You have to get like a fire pot for one part, but like it, it's so much easier than the normal fight. But that's not even the point. The point is my competition is higher. And yeah, I actually still came in third with 1.2k DPS. Would have been 1.3, I think, if I didn't die because that's where I was. So I'm super happy with that, which means I definitely know what I'm doing in terms of the rotation and stuff. So at least you guys know that the rotation you can get off that discord, what they taught me, it works really well. Those guys definitely have done their math, man. We could always get the head. We could always get the mount. We could always get this T2 armor, which I haven't got on dust Cave yet. So I guess three chances, man, three chances, just like at the beginning of the video, but this time on heroic. All right. Token of the forgotten vanquisher. Everybody's going to roll for it. One, two, Three, four, 97, 84. No way. Am I going to win? Damn, bro. I think I just won. I think I just won. Nice. Yes, I'll take that every day of the week. You can check out T2 for Hunter. And okay, Reigns of the Frenzied Chimera. Three, four, five, six. Boom, 95. Oh, 86. No. Yes. Oh my god, dude, we're gonna get journeyman riding, bro. All right, this might actually be the moment. I'm just gonna go to Nomergon and uh, go exchange this T2. Okay, I tell you guys what, if they end up doing a rework for Tinker or any major, major buffs, I guarantee you I will play it in a video again. I do need to make sure I can scrounge up the money for this mount, though, for the sake of this video. So we're gonna make that happen real quick, I hope. In fact, the last class I played that felt this strong besides DH, and I didn't really play DH enough, but I just know it was that strong, uh, but it was Boomkin, right? Okay, here it is, T2 Dragon. Stalker Spalders. The three pieces when Scrap Gun is modified, I get 5% more damage. Damn, that's booty, bro. That's like 5% more Tesla Coil damage. That's it. I mean, that's not horrid, but it is actually. 3% more damage while a turret is active for the five piece. Pretty massive eight set actually with the exposed weakness giving you another 350 ranged attack power. Anyway, let's take it. Yep, they look cooler too. Oh my goodness, man. It's my first piece of T2 ever on any character. That's really awesome. So here I am on my shaman as I was going down the list of my mains and trying to scrounge up some gold. I did use a lot of gold to get my engineering and stuff up, so I was kind of low. I realized I got mail from a guy and there's no name. Although I thought I might be lagging, but I'm, I don't seem to be. But he says, keep up the good work, I'm out. And I'm not out. I want to make it clear one more time. I'm not quitting Dust Caven like it's a big deal. I'm just letting you guys know I'm going to be playing a lot more Ascension and it might be like overwhelming, but I will play again for the board. It's still on my radar to play Dust Caven. 
but I am going to be playing a shit ton more Ascension. I just know it, especially when that new announcement comes out and we know what's going on there, right? It could be that it's 50-50, but that's a lot different than it's been for two months. I just want to make that clear. So I'm not quitting, but this guy apparently did. And he just gave me a huge, ridiculous amount of, I mean, it was about to go away. Can you imagine or get returned of flasks and uh, elixirs and just good stuff? I'm going to take all that. But then I saw this very last one. He gave me his gold stack. 2,568 gold, which I can buy the mount training with. Wow. A goblin power shovel for whatever reason. Sometimes you don't even know why people give you what they give you. But honestly, like, it came in handy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, bro. I don't know who you are, and I'm so sorry that I don't know who you are, but there's no name. But that gold just saved this video, to be honest with you. All right, guys. So I am here getting my mount training. 285 gold. There we go. Fast and furious. Let's make this mount happen. Not many people could possibly have this mount, you would only assume, right? You can only get it off Onyxia as far as I know. And there we go. Frenzied Chimera. Oh my god. Whoa! Wait. I turn into it? That's crazy. I wonder if people could ride me. I did not expect to turn into it. That's so weird. It's a transformation effect. Of course, I still go at 100% speed, but still. Okay, so I do actually have a good idea. I think we go out with a little bit of a bang in this video, and we find a low-level new player, and we give him like 250 gold. I think that would be really, really sick, not gonna lie. And more importantly, though, we do it as a chimera, right? So let me make something very clear as I begin to talk about yet another interesting dust cave and subject in this video, but everybody's talking in world chat right now about a poll that's up apparently in the discord and uh, it's based entirely on what I went over in my last video. Now the last video was a baby video. I shot it out there just because why not? I knew I wasn't going to be able to get out a big video so I put out a tiny one. But I thought it was a pretty interesting one nonetheless because I wanted to answer the question what is vanilla plus and so I did and I think I answered it very very objectively and very fairly and it does turn out that dust cave-in doesn't fit every criteria perfectly but it fits most of the criteria well and so as a result of that, even though it's stretchy, it's still closest to vanilla plus than anything else, and therefore it's V plus. But there are some things that make it different. So one of the things was, for example, the teleportation feature. Now, upon further inspection, it doesn't look like Turtle Wow has any way to teleport in their uh, shop, which is good. They're staying very true to the most logical step to what vanilla plus should look like. Because even if Blizzard did it, I wouldn't want them to jump ahead, you know? But I do think Dust Caven is like an end game for vanilla plus. Not perfect, but closer to vanilla plus than anything else. But not not having an instant queue random dungeon finder is definitely more vanilla than not. So in this poll, they want to take it out of the game so that you can no longer queue for dungeons and insta-teleport. It would make it way more vanilla, and I think that's a pretty big thing. So this is a little confusing, not gonna lie, because some of these options, I don't understand why I would have to pick, like, C, but I can't also have D. Maybe I'm misreading it, but for me, when it says unlock dungeons, does it mean unlock the ability to teleport? You know what? I'm gonna abstain from voting, but you guys can go vote yourself. I want to understand it more before I place a vote. So I just want to say real quick, I just hard disagree. I really don't think people have, like, a big big brained approach to this. I'm not trying to put anybody down, but, but this guy said literally it has nothing to do with vanilla. It's wrath capped at level 60. And I just think that's a doo-doo way to look at things. It makes literally no sense to me. What is wrath of the Lich King to you? Is it having a death knight in the game? Is it instant teleporting random dungeon finder? Or is it leveling through Northrend, doing Northrend raids, Northrend arena with a max level cap of 80? Because to me, the latter makes more sense than the former for dictating what Wrath is. As a result of that, if we're going to say that Dust cave -in is level 60 capped, vanilla raids, vanilla experience with the dungeon and with this concept they have as well where they're trying to add vanilla concepts to the game and make all these different things unique like let's say 2-8 shaman put back in the game then in this regard i think it makes more sense for it to be vanilla plus but really really far on the plus compared to let's say t wow or epoch wow instead of wrath plus which to me wrath plus would be literal wrath of the lich king if they added more to it this is not that i know it's really dicey for some people but i just don't think this is actually a real argument if i'm wrong i'm wrong and feel free free to debate it in the comments, right? I will be respectful, but ultimately, let me make my position very, very clear. The thing is, Wrath is dictated by the big things that don't exist in this game, not the little quality of life things that the Wrath game actually gave us, right? Those are small things, things that we might have actually wanted back in 2005, but we just didn't get. To me, Wrath is dictated by the Northrend Continent, the level 80 cap, the Northrend raids, the Northrend dungeons, and the Northrend class balance, and the classes are also based off Wrath, but completely different. Different. To me, this conversation is just like super gatekeepy, and it's also like really stupid, like a touch grass moment. Like, I really do feel like it's just on the far side of the vanilla plus spectrum. You might not like that. It might
might bother you that they didn't do things in a more purest way. If Dusthaven was the only Vanilla Plus server out there, I would actually be on those guys' side. But it's not. In fact, there's bigger servers like Turtle Wow that are doing it more like how you want. But this argument is lame, right? So I'm never going to talk about it again. I promise you that. All right, this guy just bowed before me. Will he kneel? If he bends the knee, yep. Little Vayu, I think you're new. Whether you're new or not, though, you just got lucky because I went to Northshire and I found you. And you, my friend, get 250 G just for existing. Enjoy your life, my friend. Enjoy your life. All right, guys, discussion out of the way. Showed you guys how this performs. Turns out it's freaking amazing. Had some great finishes. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Major thanks to all the members on my channel, by the way. Love and appreciate you guys. Really, really do. But I think we did a great job with this. So if you guys enjoyed it, like and sub. I'll see all of you on the next one, though. Big doubles out.